Uh, Alright, sorry. So, uh, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I had to I had to put up the background sound. Uh, okay. Uh, why are butter? Yeah, I I did say I was gonna deal with some issues. Uh, well, we're gonna deal with it. it's not fair. Uh, it's not something that could make a full topic. Yeah, I did say I was gonna deal with the um, son and Vinny relationship. All right problems to do with the yes and history today yeah i did say i was gonna do that but it's not it's something really brief 10 15 20 minutes i don't want to do us so much eh? yes i don't want to do us so much i will take a bit of this a bit of this a bit of this since i don't want to do us so much on um, one particular history today okay so i'll just take a bit of this a bit of this a bit of this and a bit of this so so that's my intention for today so um can talk about no no that's not my that's not my derrick or sayemary then that's not my area of specialization i don't i don't uh a whole lot of person talked about present situation in Nigeria and they do right now. I don't talk about present situations. Um, no, we're deeply concerned, except the the ones that threatened um, our historical um, uh, survivor. I, I try to be very very focused in what I deal with. Most times, I try to be very very focused on what I deal with. Uh, I like to be that person who this practically on uh, our, our old ways of life and how we can use that to to change the the present situations. Well, a whole lot of persons are dealing with present situations. I don't want to talk. I'm not. Fair. I have my views about politics. A lot of you might not like me when I start talking about politics. I have my view, and um, I just don't talk about it. I have I have my that I have my perceptions about things and uh, I just don't talk about them political views and there are things I basically don't talk about publicly I don't talk about political views publicly I don't talk about religious views publicly except probably you ask me in private or you want to know a lot of persons doesn't really know what I um, the, uh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim and all that. I'm just very tolerant to all beliefs of humanity. So I'm not uh, so there are basic things I just don't talk about. Um, so I just okay. It's some connection between this topic. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna talk about that twenty minutes. We're done to so move on to the next one. Uh yes, my generator, sorry. Generator is labo. I hope I'm audible enough. It's my I hope my my I hope I'm audible enough. I hope I'm audible enough. It's my sound. I hope the projection of my sound uh, a lot of you can hear. Thank you. Where's it? Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, let's briefly talk about the relationship between Asans and Benin. Um, it's something that I really don't want 
um, I don't really want to do it too. Uh, um, it's something I really don't want to talk so much about because I don't want to. I don't like dwelling so much on issues that uh, can be misrepresented out of or be quoted out of these historical context. All right. I like to keep it as I like. Um, I like situations where we can all open our minds, all right, to understand uh, from different perspectives and views. So basically, uh, it is a bit sensitive. When I'm dealing with sensitive issues about Benin and Essence, I like to see the way they are, all right, without having to favor one ethnic group or one tribe over the other. All right. Uh, okay, I, I think I'll talk about that maybe later. Ogida, I think I have a little bit story, uh, history about Ogida and all that. Uh, no, 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 no. Before, I don't know. Jonas, I get did something on the Isan. I don't know. I promised my viewers, my fans. For the past two weeks, I was going to deal with that. I, I will not deal with denigrating any tribe. I don't. <laughs> the perspective of the Onosaige is entirely different from what I will say publicly. I'll just tell you the truth. And uh, I'm not denigrating anybody. I'm not interested in calling this one which <laughs> calling this one. No, 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 no. My platform is an educating program. The only people that tend to strike a chord on my names and I get very angry when I address them uh, but maybe most times I come out publicly to also say sorry to them not because they deserve it or they are deserving of the sorry but because I'm just that kind of a person who wants to use a platform for educating the people and not for controversies if you see there are a whole lot of people who have reported a whole lot of people misbehaving online to me different all of them but i don't talk about them because i don't want my platform to be imbued with controversy so i know there are a lot of controversial characters that comes online every day to talk about different topics for whatever different reasons but my platform is a platform that where you come you learn something something very tangible something you can pass on to your children something you can pass on to people around you so that's what my platform is for so I want to talk about something controversial. Now, the relationship between Essence and Benin's are very... It's like the relationship between brothers and sisters. It doesn't go beyond that. I don't want to use... I'm very careful. I don't want to use the word relationship between a father and a son or a father and a child. That's not a relationship. The relationship is just... Uh, I'll make you see it from this perspective. I like you people... Um, Okay, so I like I like you people to see it from this perspective. I like you people to see it from this perspective. Um, now, my, I'm going to give you a bit of chronology of my father. I'm going to give a bit of chronology of my father, of my family. My name is Zodua. My father's name is Amowie. My grandfather's name is Imae Nahue. My great-grandfather's name is Imaswen. Then my great great grandfather's name is Aluge. Assuming my great great grandfather, who is Aluge, left Benin for whatever reasons. For whatever reasons. It could be because there were family issues. It could be because he wanted to change location, wanted to change environment. It could be for whatever reasons. Probably he traveled to. Let me just jam in. Uh, for example, he traveled. He migrated for whatever reasons. Because maybe because there was a war. That's as in because of the the civil war or the British invasion. So he decided to travel out of Nigeria. So that the, there was where my great grandfather was giving birth to. That is in my uh, And so, so my great grandfather was giving birth to in my 
the mass when that was where my grandfather was giving birth to the minor when there was where my father was giving birth to a movie and there was where i was giving birth to all right now it doesn't change the fact that i am a benign person it only shows that my my parents at one point in history migrated it's just like black americans they're africans by ancestry all right it doesn't change their ancestry yeah they're black americans they are black americans but they are they're ancestrally africans all right and um, it's the same my ancestors a long time ago for whatever reasons migrated to germany and they are not german nationals but it doesn't change the fact that they are sexual they are sexually benign all right but what is incorrect is when i haven't spent i my 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 lineage now i've not spent about 150 years in germany and i decide to return home and then i meet a benign man then i'm no longer more like a typical benign because my intonation would have been changed i i might not be able to even hear larry a day or the basic benign the language i might not be able to hear them because my 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 great great grandfather left about 150 years ago but it doesn't change the fact that i am a benign man ancestrally benign all right so i eventually now come back home and the people i meet home are not telling me that they are my father like uh you know that sort of a thing like even my age mates like assuming i'm 30 and I'm not meeting like a 30 years old Benin person who probably stayed behind, whose ancestors didn't migrate, all right, because uh, the, the the environment was favorable for them to have stayed behind, all right, didn't migrate, and they not see me for the first time. I'm there and they are now ascribing me to say that a 30 years my own age mate is not telling me that we want him. That becomes a problem. I must remind that person that no, 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 no I'm not a child. We're age mates. We are brothers. And that's a point. Alright? Now, I don't want to dwell on controversies. Alright? Now, I'm not interested in this is what this said, this is what this said. My programs are usually not interested in all those side talks. Those are merely side talks. My program is only interested in the historical connections between the Asians and the Benin people. Brothers. Related. Asians are ancestrally Benin. It's a one-way thing, all right? Insans are ancestrally benign people. They are the history. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are about two types of histories: the the origins of the earliest Asians and the origins of the majority of the Asian people. All right. Now there there is according to the works of um, Professor O. S. B. of Morrigan, he believed that they were already class of Asians, people existed in those areas but there were very few of them there were very very few of them until a large stock of benin people went to join them i mean the quoted to be in the eras of the era of obaiwai the first uh, obaiwai the first but like i said i don't want to dwell on Frivolities. I don't want to dwell on this is what this said, this said. Like, for example, what I'm, what I'm making reference to. Uh, what I'm making reference to. It's, um, as I was growing up as a child. Uh, as I was growing up as a child. Um, we grew up in a family where my mom keeps telling us that. If you want to get married, don't marry an Asian woman. That's how I grew up. As a matter of fact, um, yeah, it became part of me. I didn't know anything. I was just a child, an innocent child for that matter. I never really understood why, what was the reason. I still probably don't understand what, what could have been the reason. Then in 2017, I was already a boarding historian. I wanted to write a book. I wanted to write a book about my community. That's my, probably the only published work I've ever done. I have a book to my credit. The, the Asian town of Igbehwe, near Korean. I wrote that book, 
I completed that book. That book was launched um, December 30th, 2017, in my village. Now, when I was putting my, uh, when I was putting my data together, when I was putting my data together, obviously that was when I found that that I'm not ancestrally from Igbekwe, that we are migrants for Yemen, we are princes of the kingdom. So my ancestors, my great great grandfather Aluge, with his two younger brothers, left uh, Yemen in search of their sister, who was Atumogu Nohua and all that. Uh, yeah, Umu will not want another insertion, and they eventually got to Ibihwe and they got settled. That became the genesis of the Lamogo family in my community. Now, we also had Ligesan family. Now, the original owners of my community are Laiso family. Now, they also had Ligesan family because my mom, she's from Ligesan, I wanted also to also get the family tree of my mom. That was when I started tracing, 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 and I got and I found out that the founder of um the legacy family his name is called or boy all right and he was a migrant from a billy present the asian land so that means paternally my mother she's an asian woman and this was the same woman that said i shouldn't get married none of the students should get married it's a primordial sentiment but most of these persons are saying it and one more <laughs> Without having an Esa mother and Zen father. So it's a close relationship. So most times, these things are done out of ignorance. I'm just trying to say, ah, until the day I had to tell my mom, like, yeah, are, are you aware you're an Esa woman? She was like, eh, no. Oh, yeah, my father used to tell me then that our ancestors, one of our ancestors came from a billion. Yeah. It was shocking. It was a very fun day, actually. You understand? So, uh, so, um, uh, so please, I, I don't want distractions. So, but I'm just trying to tell you these are these are sentiments that uh, parents are put in the minds of children that are might not that are inherently not true. All right, one can really tell the rivalry, but what I can say is the rivalry of brothers. Uh, I wouldn't say uh, if if. I say it in publicly all the time, and you can quote me, you can take my words anywhere. I'm not, I'm not that kind of a Benin person that have a supremacy ideology that, uh, most especially when it comes about Benin, Benin descendants. What I tell Essence every day is that no matter however you're going to look at it, Essence and Benin descendants, they are ancestrally Benin. They are not different from all one people who are also ancestrally Benin, who probably comes and they are very proud of it. I think the only difference between other Benin descendants and Asian is a beef that every other Benin descendant agree to their Benin ancestry other than modern day Asians, not even the old ones. Because if you walk one, the, 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 the first, the foremost Asian historian, Dr. C.J. Okoji, <clears throat> made it very clearly in his work Asian laws and Asian laws native. I'm forgetting the title of the book, but it's like Asian native laws and custom. I think that's how it is. Asian native laws and custom, written by Dr. C. J. Christopher Okoji, is a foremost Asian historian. All right, he need in his work. Uh, sorry, I couldn't come with the book, but I just mentioned the title of the book is Asian native laws and custom, written by Dr. Christopher Okoji. Is a foremost Asian historian. Now, I don't listen to these young guys that come on social media to talk trash. I don't listen to them. When you go to earliest Asian historians, like the foremost Asian historian, Siddhi Okoji, he may mention there was a path that, um, that, that she said that, uh, that she said that a Motan, a Motan, it should be the most dignified deity in Asian land because if there was no Emotan, look at what they said, understand the clue. According to Dr. Christopher Koji in his work, Asian Native Laws and Custom, he said there's a, there's a particular paragraph, I might not be able to quote it verbatim, 
because I read it quite some time ago, about two, three years ago, but that's how he put it. He said, a motan, all right, should be the foremost deity in Asian land. The reason why he said to, he said, if there was no a motan, there would not have been Obaiwai the first. If there was not Obaiwai the first, there would not have been Asian people. All right, that's exactly how he put it. I'm quoting from a foremost Asian historian, Dr. C.J. Okoji. Everybody knows the story. If there was no Emotan, it would have been practically, would have been almost impossible for Prince Ogun to have become Obaiwai the first. And if there was no Obaiwai the first, there wouldn't have been Asian. Now, the reason is because, now, this is the historical perspective from which how the Asian people evolved from Benin or migrated from Benin. Not just Asian people, Asako or one is almost the same time. Even most other tribes, most tribes in Delta, some of the tribes in Delta, most tribes in River State, it was almost the same time of migration because of what had happened in Benin. All right, um, understand this. Uh, now, there was a crisis. Everybody knows her story. In case you're not aware of the story, Obaiwai had two sons. The first two sons of Obaiwai called Boyuwa, who is the first, who is the patriarch of the Daikenshi, who is the first Daiken of Benin Kingdom, called Boyuwa. And his younger brother, Izuwara, for whatever reasons, they got envious of themselves. Uh, they fought and they killed themselves. All right. Uh, the community presided. Izuwara was a Nogi of Iowa, had a war with Uselu presided by the Edaiken was Koboi Wai's elder brother and they all went to war. Both of them went to war, fought themselves, killed themselves, they died the same day. Now that death was announced to Obaiwai. Obaiwai the first, the Obarabini got to be aware of that incident, that devastating incident playfully by one of the palace jesters. Alright, so because of that, that that thing infuriated him. He got very angry that something as grievant or grievous rather as his two sons killing themselves the same day was not that information was not passed to him by his notable chiefs all right notable notable chiefs and instead it was no you're always i'm i mean daniel sawari you're always everyone is always free to contribute all right uh, contribute. So if it's something that I agree with, I agree with. If it's something I disagree with, I disagree with. You're free. You're free to contribute. Now, eventually, uh, yeah, I was supposed to get a line, an open line today. Someone I asked came to bring my the my office line. The person just messed up. My bio warrior and all that, but hopefully, I'm feeling it by next Sunday. Will make open line now available. Like I was saying, uh, eventually Obaiwai got pissed. So he now put a stringent law for the mourning. He said his two children will be mourned for three years. And in that three years, three things, uh, three laws will be put. He put three laws in place for three years. The first is this. Anyway, uh, Okoje called these three stringent laws as barbaric and wicked. That's exactly how the historian put it. I know his pains, all right? All right, I know his pains. Um, the three laws that Obaiwai put was the first one that nobody in the entire Benin Kingdom, Benin Empire, as it was already, will cook for three years. So nobody will be seen to cook for three years. Imagine you don't cook. Imagine you don't get to eat cooked food for a week, for a month, for a year. Now, three years, no cooked food for three years. That was the first law. The second law was that nobody in the kingdom, including him, should take his or her bath for three years. All right? Nobody, including him, would take his or her bath for three years. Three years. And the third he placed was there will not be sexual intercourse. I think that's the, that's, that's the baba of them all. All right, he said there will not be sexual intercourse for three years. All right, 
There will not be sexual intercourse for three years. Now, these are the three things he proved. Nobody in the entire kingdom should cook for three years. Uh, um, Nobody is allowed to take his or bath for three years. And the third one is nobody is allowed to have sexual, to engage in sexual intercourse for three years. These are the three laws, very stringent. So, Dr. C.J. Christopher Koji, the foremost Asian historian, called these three laws wicked. To an extent, I think they were wicked, actually. To a very large extent. They were, those laws were too stringent. Alright? So, hey, imagine a nice or more trauma. I see now they want me weak people pass. Now that no sexual intercourse for three years. Imagine. No, say you and your wife. We got the house. Three years. Not the touch her. She not the touch you. You know? So these were the three laws that was placed in Benin. So the people, the Benin people had no reason and no other option than to run, to migrate. Alright? So there were, there were so much emigration. A lot of people, a lot of people migrated from Benin. A lot, not just only the Asians. That's where we're getting it wrong. The Asakos, almost majority of the Asakos, the Owens and all that, the Ekbeye, the Ogbea, the Ogba, the Ogba people, the 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 Kwere people, the Uruha, quite a whole lot of people in that 15th century if you see when when i've traveled to a lot of these kingdoms obviously that's 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 a function of my association we try we locate all the benin descendants and we've visited quite a lot of them now if you if they begin to give you their own aspect of their history you begin to hear when all of them will be saying 15th century during obaiwai the first that was the it's not coincidental it's because it was a law that was placed. It, there was a mass exodus of immigration. A lot of people left Benin. A lot. All right. Uh, we'll find time to talk about that. The not and Ghana, not Ghana, Ga people. The uh, um, uh, what was it called? The the, the Nongwa clowns of the Ga people. We have a time to talk about that. Um, but not today, definitely not today. Maybe some other class. So a whole lot of people migrated, not just the East and the other one, the East, almost the same time that no, there were there were migration even before by why the first, but it was in small badges. Alright? It was in small badges. But the mass emigration happened during a by why the first. Alright. So that was how a lot of these places. Now when these people were leaving they did not live as Asian people. And that's the point I'm trying to derive. They didn't leave. If my ancestors had left Benin, he probably haven't... Like, I gave an example. If my ancestors had spent quite a 150 years in Germany. My ancestors in, probably had left as Germans. The African-Americans never had left as African-Americans. Sorry, the, um, the, the black Americans didn't leave as black Americans. They left as Africans. And that's why Africans is the ancestral home. Alright? So, when these people were living, they didn't live as Isako, Owa, Isan, Ekbeye. They left as Benin people. Alright? So, series of uh, cultural affiliations with all the clans that came in and all that changed languages, changed quite other things. But, Obviously, the cultural semblance is second to know in terms of linguistic, uh, in terms of languages, in terms of closeness of languages, Sans are the most close to the language because they have the closest proximity to us as well. Um, I think it's about the, the general historical background, but like I've said, there's another school of thought that said there were already some Asians who had existed. Some people, whether you regard them as Asians, that existed. In those area presently being called Asa land before this mass exodus of Benin people joining them so if that account by OSB or is correct it therefore shows that about 80% or 90% of the Asian population today ancestrally Benin just about 10% that might not have been ancestrally Benin or might have been ancestrally Idu or whatever you want to call it but Idu himself is a Benin man 
otogbe otalaka ewa ni anabidu so it's the language didn't change like for example uh if you there could be intonation these are dialects that's why the benin dialect the asian dialect the edo language is a language uh it's the same basically basically possibly the same so the point i'm trying to raise here is like when i was in the university then i was not as enlightened as i am right now i was um that was far back 2012 i remembered i also contest for the post of uh, the president of national association of um, of a dual state student in obafemi awogo university leife also contest as a president then obviously um you know when you want to contest now you have to go and meet all that your predecessors or probably your supposedly predecessors uh, so one of them was asan i remember kinsley akibe i can't forget i can't forget him because the word he told me at that time i was just a young lad who never really understands this whole controversy but asans who never really understand that there could be this rivalry that was the first time i ever heard that rivalry and if not because i became enlightened i would have still be stuck on that rivalry till date uh i went to tell him to solicit for his favor to support me to become the next nice person i remember exactly how what he told me he said over his dead body will he support any binima to become a president in ife that's exactly that's exactly how he put it over his dead body and i was like I, i felt ashamed of myself when i was leaving the hostel <laughs> I remember I was staying we both were living in the same hostel Fajui Fajui Hall you know in Ife that's what that's as Ali how he put it say over his dead body so I felt very pained and I had that grudge for for a while until I left the university I started I started to read more about the Benin history now there are two school of thought about the rivalry <coughs> about Benins and Asians the first is some who engage in this rivalry they are very ignorant of the history that connects both the benins and essence so sometimes that's why you see being illiterate being illiterate being being ignorant sometimes can be better than being semi-literate all right because you have no when you have a half knowledge about something sometimes it's what it's better for you not to have knowledge about anything than to partially have knowledge about something you end up m- making a mess out of yourself so so that's exactly what happened at that time it's not ishan it's ishan the ishan is anglicized all right so so it's anglicized the exact word is ishan ishan is anglicized just like when people when we try to it's just like we like in one of our subsequent class i said ubini u-b-i-n-i is the actual word ubini is the actual word all right the anglicized word it's the benin the b-e-n-i-n and i have said it countless of time that there is nothing like b-i-n-i it doesn't exist anywhere in benin it doesn't have any meaning so it's wrong for anybody to 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 ascribe us as b i n i yes b e n i n it's wrong to an extent because it's an anglicized form of the actual word all right <laughs> the anglicized yeah anglicized yeah of the actual word but however however it is still generally acceptable but what does not have meaning is b i n i doesn't have any meaning all right yeah ubini has a meaning it's just like saying osasu they're not saying sasu all right so that's the point i'm trying so that's why it's not ishan it's isan you can call it ishan you're not wrong though but it's know that the actual word is isan but the anglicized from it is uh, ishan so uh just like i've said it's a point and that's why cj okojo was really really in the work that go and read that book it's so very interesting like i can't really remember the page but i know it's between the first page one to page 10 
where he was really, really, really pissed with Obayawai the first. Because he said, if Obayawai the first had not put those stringent, um, if, if they have not put those stringent laws, if he has not put those stringent laws, they will not have been Asan today. We have all been called Benin. So, and he proudly referred to Benin as his ancestral home. Now, we're talking about foremost Asan historian, but what the modern Asan historians are trying to do is to cause friction amongst brothers. No, not is U B I N I favor Amen. U B I N I U B I N I. That's what Bini. Not U B. <laughs> Funny. All right. So that's what the modern Asians are trying to do. I, I don't. Know. The modern Asians are trying to do cross unnecessary rivalry, but that is very wrong. All right. So, but the old Asian historian understood the. The connection, uh, the connection between the ancestral connection that the ancestral home of every Asian person has been in. So, but the Benin should desist from this supremacy stuff. Now, if you understand that an Asian person is a, is ancestrally Benin, so there isn't any reason for you to call them your children. It, I've explained it pisses anybody off. Sometimes I, I'm I'm tended. To take their side and sometimes i'm tended to just look back and laugh because there was a for example there was one article some they still publish it all the time in the isa mega forum and all that i read that i don't react i just laugh all right because i've come to understand some of these things that it's just better you just laugh it through now those ones who really want to learn will learn all right there's this article that they usually publish about uh, the uzia people killing ozolwa uh, Killing on Basel and all of that. And we try to correct them that that's not how that story happened. And they are very proud about it. And that they had a hand in one of the deaths of one of the other. And it's something that they should, they should be not be happy about. But that wasn't the real story. All right? Yeah. So um, it's all about tolerance. It's all about tolerance. Uh, it's all about tolerance. Uh, well, that's, I think that's, that's practically where there is a problem. Can't be a senior brother to everybody. Uh, in one way, what's your classification? What's your classification for saying that you're a senior brother to them? Asians respect Benin's as senior brothers. But we shouldn't be poking it on their faces. Otherwise, you say you are one, then how come you've delegated seniority to yourself? If they recognize that Benin is the ancestral home, and that's that's so fucking enough. Oh, sorry, I use the word fucking. And that's the best. You can't say you can't preach equality and at the same time preach seniority. That's the perspective we must look at it from. The best argument, and which is true, is that they are ancestrally Benin people. So seniority shouldn't even come. Seniority shouldn't even come. I'm not interested in seniority. If I meet an answer person, if I'm in a group of an answer person, and they said, according to what has been left to them by their ancestors, that uh, that um, uh, the breaking of the polar knot. All right, the breaking of the polar knot. I've talked about Igweben in one of our subsequent classes and. They are from Igun, the Ben people. In the, that community was created in about 15, 15, 15, 16. I talked about it in one of our programs. So, 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 um, the, the perspective is that it is all about when people agree that that's your ancestral home. Uh -huh. Sorry, I've corrected that. Now, what I was saying is that if I'm in the midst of an Asian people, the whole kola knot that when you see a Benima, he must break, he must, he must break that kola knot. Amazing. If an Asian, if Asian people decide to accord me being a Benin person, um, that that traditional respect for me to break kola knot does not meet does not mean inferiority. I don't. I, um, it doesn't mean inferiority. 
it means an ancestral respect that they still see me as the stay homer like just like when we talk about the on him being someone who stays at home and all that yeah, on it's not it does not have any connection with oduduwa but he was the one who stayed at home to maintain the oduduwa throne so every other yoruba oba still look at him as their elder just because he stayed at home so if Essence, accord me that respect because I'm a stay at home. That's yeah, because I now stay at their own ancestral home. Don't forget, the, the point is we should understand, we should be more practical in our analysis for us to see, from us to see the old essence of this thing. If you say that they ancestrally Benin, so they didn't leave Benin as Essence, <laughs> they left Benin as Benin. It's the idea they left Benin and said so there is no basis for seniority now but if they had decided to give me being Benin you could my ancestors could have left my ancestors like for example I look at I trace I, I talked about my five generations back analyze it assuming my great great grandfather could have migrated to Asian and that could have made me an Asian man today maybe 300 years ago but I will not take it from any Benin man calling me their children, because I know that I'm as bini as you are. But where there is a problem is when the Asians start to see themselves separating themselves from their ancestral home as not being benign ancestrally. That's where there is a problem, and that's where I have problems with a whole lot of them. And sometimes I just I just ignore and just leave. There will not be any basis for comparison if one understands that this is my ancestral home. And the other one understands that these are my people. There will not be any base. If the Asa understand that Benin is the ancestral home, so they are ancestrally Benin. And if the Benin people understand that Asans are their brothers who just walked some few miles away from the ancestral home, there will not be any basis for comparisons. But the now becomes frictions when um, some now feel that I'm Asan, I'm not Benin. That becomes a problem. All right, so we should all see ourselves as Benin. Even as Asian, it doesn't take anything from you as an Asian person for crying out loud, you are ancestrally Benin. So, when I when I refer to when we call Benin, when we call Great Benin, when we call Great Benin Empire, I know a lot of persons have been making a whole lot of mistakes. I'm so tired correcting all of you. There's nothing like Edo Empire or Edo Kingdom. I know, see. It's a matter of words. These words, I don't understand. I, I don't know whether to open some of our brains to sink it in. All right? Just, okay. Because Benin, Esan, Afema, they are now inside a do state. So, Esans see themselves as a do people and not Benin people. That's a correction. All right? And... Afema, some who are not knowledgeable, see, see themselves as a do people and not Benin people. And it's, it's high time we actually reinvent this history. I try to let them know that Edo as a word is a Benin word. So if you are an Edo man, it makes you a Benin man because the, the, uh, a lot of people don't really understand how the word Edo came to be. Edo was a Benin, a Benin servant who was serving Ogefa that helped Prince Ogun to, they were planning to kill Prince Ogun, who eventually became Obayawai the first. A young man called Edo was the one who helped him. All right, and when, and during, because he helped him, the chief, the master of that young man killed him. And when Prince Ogun became the Obara of Benin, he went to assume his body and buried him in the front of the palace. There's a small building in the front of the palace. We call that place Awe Ediendo. The Edo we are talking about is that person. And that person was a Benin person. It was assumed. And Awe Diendo, propitiated by Esogma. Esogma is the, is the priest of Awe Diendo. Now, if you are being given a chief tenancy title, you, you visit about 13 pilgrimage stations in Benin. The first place you must visit is Awe Diendo. I don't understand. So the word Edo itself, it's a, it was a Benin man. In which, in order for Obayawai to reward him for the for the job it did for him, he decided to name the capital, not the not the empire, the capital of the empire. He named it Edo, which was which was not retained post-colonially. So that is why I cannot refer Oba 
I cannot refer to my Oba as Oba of Edo because it's limiting. That means it's, 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 it's rich, it's Edo state. But when you are still calling Oba of Benin, it's only meeting, all right, the, the Ga people, the Nungwa people traces their ancestry to Benin, the ancestral home. The Ekbeye, the Soko, the Urubo. A lot of, lot of these ethnic tribes, oh, almost 50 of these ethnic traces their ancestry to Benin as an ancestral home. So, there's something like a Do kingdom is limiting, except I don't know whether you people are having another kingdom. But what we have is Benin kingdom. That's it. That is the one that got to Ghana, not Edo. Edo, Edo is limited. Edo was a capital. Edo is the capital of the empire Benin. All right, so basically, with that 57 pop, see, these, are, these are issues. And why are you mourning it? We shouldn't go that too far and start talking about issues that are frivolities these are issues of frivolities all right um let's continually i know a whole lot of persons there these some of these people out there on social media they feel that they 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 are doing everything humanly possible to quit to continue to that the only way that these these are these are general tactics of Igbo, Igbo people. They do that a lot. They try to bring, they try to bring disharmony between Asans and Benin. And a whole lot of Asans are falling for it. I don't know why. You, you start listening to people who will in entirety will never mean you well. In entirety will never mean you well. There's no way an Igbo man will reach any, mean any Asan person well. All right, but a binima was okay. Now let me let me let me say this. Let me say this so that you understand that there are few misguided binims, and there are few misguided Asians. In all ever how you want to put it, there are always misguided ones. There was a conference that was held in the United States. I can't really remember, but I heard it was in the late eighties. Late eighties. Now the chairman of that occasion was the late. The, the, the nationalist, the late um, attorney in Naharu, was the chairman of that occasion. Now, there was a, a renowned professor. I can't seem to remember the name until I make a call to one of my mentors who told me this story some years ago. He said there was a renowned professor who, who came out. It was an ASAN conference in the late 80s who came out and was trying to tell the other ASAN people that um, Benins are trying to marginalize them in a do state, uh, blah, blah, blah. He was, he, 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 some normal sentiment that you see seen in the mouth of uh, some Asians online and everywhere around you and all that. You also see those sentiments in the mouth of Benins as well, but this is about Asian. I've not been, until I've been told about Benin also cra crafting some sentiments as well. But this actually happened in the 1980s. After he said everything, then Enahoro stood up and told him that, yes, Professor, I have heard you, but what you said is entirely wrong because every single place in Benin land, what you now call Benin land, they are one Asan or the other. He told him about going into OGRE. If, if, in case you haven't noticed, if you go to OGRE, there are a whole lot of Asan named streets. There are communities in Benin till now, even more now, that Asans are secretaries, even becoming vice chairman. We don't discriminate. We don't even discriminate against other tribes. So, Enauro was trying to let the man that it is only tolerant people. He said, we, there are more, Asans are more established in Benin land than Benin's been established in Asan land. He was trying to tell him that your, your hatred of these people is unjustified it's not justified it's unjustified so why grieve over what is not even existing fragment of your imagination because you think this is it yeah. okay if if your basis in fine if your basis for your argument 
Okay, what if I now tell you that Igbos, migrants in Anabra, that the original people in Anabra state were Benin people, that Igbos came because your population was more, the Benins left. So some people just, I don't know how some people think, Jerry. I don't know where that one came from. All right? But we are, Julef, I, I give that up. I've heard you. It's true that a lot of persons say that. A lot of persons say that. All right? Um, but it's also true that that at one point in history could have been could have been blew out of misconceptions. Could have been could have been a folk tale that was allowed to persist for too long and therefore creating a division. But in all of these, uh, we must change our ways, all right? We must change our ways and we must understand that however we want to put it, we are more connected than we ever think. If you start to trace some of this ancestry, if you start to trace some of this ancestry, some of these Asian people, you, 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 six generations ago, you, you people were cousins, first cousins. That's how that close we are. Do you know how many Asian? Do you know how many? Do you know more, over forty percent of Oba's first wife are Asian? And do you know why? Stanley? That is why when when I was talk when I talk about history, you you always hear me say that uh, when the, the crown prince was having an issue, he ran to. Around to this place, all always in Asian land. That means they are, these crown princes, their mothers were Asian, and when they had issues in their paternal environment, they had to run to their Montana villages. All right. So, in all of these, in all of these, um, I've come to realize one thing: those who wish to those who wish to continue to blow our relationship, our brotherhood, our ancestral connection into dustbin for sakes of rivalry, we should just clap and ignore them. If any Bini man tells an Asian person, something wrong the asian person should just clap and ignore them if an asian person just say anything wrong to benin person the mini person should just clap and that's what i've been doing i don't hold what i just talked when i'm being tagged in some of these posts where i see a lot of asian people very 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 passionate about saying that no now nah, without asians they won't have been beneath so i was like yeah that's beautiful without asians they won't have been beneath beautiful that's the argument because Asians themselves are Benin, so that's why without Benin, just like without Benin, there is no Benin. So it's an argument. All right. So when a Benin man says without Benin, they won't have been Asian, I also say yes. Without Benin, there shouldn't be any Benin. So there are no business of argument. Most of this, most times, I just laugh through. Most times, I just don't comment. I just call one or two persons that my friend I was like, yeah, I've heard them say that. Can we just move on? In all of this, I have classified us this rivalry issue into two classifications. Number one, ignorance, and two, pride. Two things. Some don't know the ancestral connection between Benin and Asians. The only thing, you just say, ah, Asians children are ignorance. All right? Then, some know, but for the sake of pride, that nah, I'm an Asian person now, nah, 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 Benin, Benin or rich. The other one was like, I've been in person, it's an orange. These are two, two classifications. Pride. If you remove that pride and you remove that ignorance, you see, you just see that in all history, it's Benin. And we have always said, we have always said at all times that I, I know now Asians are trying to say that they have kings. There are no kings. You can quote me anywhere. There are no kings in Asian land. What they have is Onoji. Onojis are dukes. They are not kings in Asian land. That's because they have a king. They are
That's why they are not kings in ancient land. The Enogi of Ologbo, it's the same with the Onoji of Irwa or Onoji of Uromi. It's the same, they are all dukes. When I mean the position they hold, they are dukes, but dukes are bigger than, some dukes are bigger than some dukes. Oh, sorry, some dukedoms are bigger than some, some dukedoms. So, call me anyway, they are not kings in ancient land. I know they are trying some modern Islam and trying to like, ah, this is a king and all that. That's not true. Alright? That's not true. They are not kings in Islam land. What you have, they are dukes. They have dukedom. Onoji. Enogi. They are the same thing. Dukes. Dukedom. Alright? So, we should... These are some of the... Little little things that shouldn't cost an all price, just the truth. Benin alphabet, there's a letter J in the Asian alphabet. Alright? So instead of the, the, the G in Benin changes to J in their own. Onoji. In that case, Onoji is singular. I think in Nijis, or I don't know which one is now plural, but I shall know that Enogi is singular in Benin. The Enigi, don't want to add S, so there's nothing like Enogi is so Enogi is singular in Benin. Enigi is plural, so it's the same. All right, Uh, well, uh, a little siren, they are just postulation. Who brought Yoruba? What brought Yoruba language? Have you ever heard in Azi time, Anazi Yoruba? If Yoruba was speaking in Benin Palace, why didn't the entire Benin start speaking Yoruba? So these are just colonialist imperialism that was ceded to Yoruba to continue to lie. There's never any time that Yoruba was spoken in the palace. I there was a bit argument, even a Benin man was concerned. But if I had if I had replied him, me and I for quarrel, me and I don't quarrel reached like three times. He's a big brother, a do arise. But if I had he was saying if I had replied to him, you know, may I not get, I don't have that temperament to see some Benin people playing into the gallery of Yoruba people. So I just give you to you. So we work so very hard to correct those lies. And some Benin people are still using their ignorance or their stupidity or their foolishness. To the, and that's a, towards Yoruba kind of history. And that's the same Benin person that will come out and say, Kaladera was Ududua. It just doesn't make any sense. So, uh, so I think I've been able to. I did a video recently now on the hawk and Ugoneki, the hawk and the nogi of Ugoneki. Enige is duke. Enige is dukes. It's plural. Dukes. In English, it means dukes. That's plural. All right, plural. Then Enogi, E-N-O-G-I-E, is, is a duke, singular. Alright, so, like I've said, the little corrections that we tell ourselves goes a long way uniting ourselves. There are no kings in Esanla. They are not. They are not. They are all dukes. Answerable to the Oba of Benin. And a lot of things have changed, but we change it with our hands because for issues of pride, we change it with our hands, but it's not supposed to be so. Whoever wants to go and embrace Biafra, they will come, they will run back eventually. If you go my new boy in your own year, if you go my new boy in my swallow, you have here, you have money. 
I won't be able to tell you about Uselu. The issue of Uselu happened during uh, Obaisigi or Yesuno and all that. It's another story. They were all before the 14th century that you are talking about in fine Bernsey. They were already princes. The, the, the concept of dukedom started during the Ogiso eras. The concept of dukedoms, establishing of, of king, the Benin king sending their children to be princes in outside Benin territories. All right. Did not start with 14th century. Did not start with the second dynasty. Was on. For example, the the first Ogiso, the first king of Benin, Ogiso Egodo. His son did not become Ogido, Ogiso. His first son was a duke of Ogara. Obviously, what you call Ovie now was a duke of Ogara. I think it was Ogara now. Is it either Ogele or Ogara? I think it's Ogara. No, I think it's really the other side. Which big duke dom or kingdom now that is close to Abraka? But around that, I think Ugele also was the first king of um, a very big um, Urobo clan. All right, so it was his own grandson that came back from Ugele to become the second Ogiso here in Benin. So the concept of establishing dukes by Benin princes have been there hundreds of years before 14th century. So it therefore means that there were already dukedoms or kingdoms established in territories outside the door the altar by the Benin princes before other tribes came to meet them. So your argument is highly flawed. So it was only from 14th century that we started to expand territories. But in establishing as aborigines, we we're already in the act of establishing an aboriginal territories. But it was from the 14th, 15th century that we started territorial wars. All right? Subjecting a people. I've already answered it. Onoje means duke. Duke. Sorry, I'm not. See, the truth is that I know we need. I know a lot of you. A lot of you are asking a lot of questions. Um. Well, what we are just saying is, Igbo people should leave. What we are saying is that Igbo people should leave Benin and Esan people alone. That's what we are just saying. So we don't let us tell our story. Let us tell our story as best as we can. You people should just leave us alone. Mm? Stop infringing on stop infringing on history. The world is hampered. So stop infringing on our our brotherhood. All right, face your Igbo. At least no one is saying Anabra people should be separated from Enugu people. I know you people fight to oh, a lot. Uh -huh. You people used to burn even communities used to burn themselves in Igbo land over land. No wonder you want. Uh, Delta River State or Edo to be part of it because you guys don't have any land. Like I've told, any what what is factual, what you can Google. If you combine three states together, the three smallest states in Igbo land, which is the five Igbo land you have, if you combine them together, Edo is bigger than three. The three smallest state, Enugu is the biggest state in Igbo land. Obviously, it's about seven thousand plus. Um, um, square kilometer or so, square kilometer, uh, 7,000 plus, if you, yeah, it's quite big, but when you combine those little, little Igbo states like Anabra, Imo, which one is the other one again, 
I think your bone is also quite big. Your bone here. I think there's another one again. If you combine the three together, a dose state is bigger than then. You can prove that a dose state is 17,000 plus. So obviously, a dose and delta is bigger, way bigger than the entire Igbo land. Way bigger with a lot of change. <laughs> a lot of change. Because a dose and delta combined together is 34, almost 35,000 square kilometers land size. All right. Why, when you combine all the Igbo states, I doubt if you can get up to 27 square kilometers square miles. Edo is bigger. So, oh, so that's what was. Ah. All right. Abia, hand, huh? Abia. cash now or the point is the point is there's nothing like the point I'm trying to raise is that a hand so I do say will be bigger than any one emo state combined definitely no what I'm saying is I do say it is bigger than two local governments you can prove me wrong you can prove me wrong two local governments Two local government in a do south is bigger than I think Anabra. Anabra seems to be the smallest. Two local government in a do south is bigger than your Anabra state. Just two local government. You have Ovia Southwest, and Ovia Southwest is almost two thousand plus, it's two thousand plus square kilometers. Then you have Orion. Orion is about one thousand nine hundred square kilometers. That makes it about almost 4,000. Anabra is about 3,700 or 3,600 square kilometer. So two local government in Edo South, the small, the small, <laughs> you know, you people used to say that about being in control, just seven local government. I'm not telling you now that two local government, you can, you can, you can prove me wrong if I'm right. If I'm you can prove me wrong now, nah, I'm giving you guys an assignment. You, you people used to say about oh, being control just seven local government, but I'm not proving to you now that even with that two local government that Oba Bini controls two, and I just mentioned them of your southwest, check the size, and Orion one, check the size of your southwest is 2000 plus, Orion is almost 1900, of your north is also about 1900. So Two local government is bigger than Anabra. You can check. I beg, I beg. <laughs> you don't start, I beg. He said, he said, so from my road is bigger than that. <laughs> Very funny people. <laughs> no, no, of your, there's nothing like of your southeast, too. So, of your southwest. Of your northeast. Of your southwest. <laughs> Okay, we have heard you, Chena, John Coco. We have heard you. So go to your your landlocked um, Anambra state and leave us alone. Don't also forget that the real owners of Anambra are also Benin people. <laughs> the Onishas are Benin. So we, we also own Anambra. <laughs> Is it not the commercial hub? The commercial hub of Igbo land. We own it, Onisha. The Benins own it. So <laughs> we have been owning you people right from from time in memory. I don't also forget to the Onicha people have been in people. Or do you want do you want to argue that one now nah, be you want to go and go and meet to be of Onicha? Go and go and ask him. He will tell you himself. 
well that uh, please do you know the names i i, I think it's it's not proven i i don't believe that's two school of thought linda cassidy I, 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 there are two schools of thought. The first school of thought believe there were two female Ogishos. I disagree with that school of thought. I believe that they were not female Ogishos. They only took their mother's name to ascend the throne because they were their mother's love. Um, one is called Imose. Imose. Then the other one is called um, Oro. O R O O R O O. O double R O O R O O. Imose and Oro I think they took their mother's name. They were not actually. I don't think there are two schools of thought. There's a school of thought that believe that they were two female Ogisos. There's another school of thought that they took their mother's name on ascending the throne. And I, I think I believe in the second school of thought that there were no female Ogisos. But I just giving you the name, their names. Linda Cassidy. All right. Mm. <laughs> I bet when I leave you both people alone, no, more not nag them today. More not nag them. So let let them let us let them be. We will create a class for them to nag them up back up. <laughs> Is a chiman is not I repeat is not an evil man it was a name probably the Igbo called him the Benin's didn't call him as a chiman the Benin's knew him as Ihimi that's what we knew him as that's what we called him if it was an Igbo man why did the Obaisige sent troop royal troop after him to return him back it has to be royal blood and the one and the azikoe i'm not saying the 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 bleached uh, the one that the bleaching guy the one and the canoe i'm talking about one and the real one and the one and the azikoe already said it my old desi when he said that why is it that the onicha people do not miss with other Igbo people uh, you understand? The, he, on each other people sees other Igbo people as inferior. You know why? Because you, that's because they are royalty. Benin, that you see, this is a, they have the same pride issue with Benins because they are Benin people. On each other people see themselves as special breed because they are royalty. They are Benin royalty. So we have already proved this. A Chima is not an Igbo guy. It was a name that he became known as. For example, there is a. Um, is an, the the enogi of Ugo Niyekoriomo, the popular called his name was a mock Baogbe, but he had a nickname that most Benin people knew him as. It's called Agbogidi. Agbogidi is not a Benin word. It's more of like a car word. All right, that became the name he was known as. The popular name he was known as. It's the same thing with Eze Chima. He became new. He became popular with the word Eze Chima, but his real name was Ihimi. Eh, do eh? That was the name we gave to him. So every that's why every Eze Chima lineage traces the ancestry straight to Benin, but they know where they are from, and they know certainly they are not evil people. So you people keep deceiving yourself. Once you are related to Eze Chima, you better come to Benin and so that we can institute you and then um, can give you a quarter for you people to settle. You can write a letter to the Oba of Benin to cut a very big expanse of land for you people to come back home and settle. Mm. I said it's Benin. I just told you. What proof are you talking about? 
are you aware he fled from Benin? And a lot of those words that you call Igbos were were only were only Igbonized. They were actually Benin, like for example, Asaba, Eseba, Agbo, Agbon. These were all Benin words, only Igbonized to suit the majorly Igbo. Most of those words were Benin. Most of those words were Benin, only Igbonized. I'm sure that um, Idu is added to Onicha. Okay, let's drink it, hero. <laughs> ah. Why would you conduct a DNA test on his clan? You are the people who is claiming them. Alright? Don't forget, the DNA. There was a DNA test that was conducted. With, <laughs> with, do you know that the DNA, the DNA of the Igbo persons is, of the Igbo people is very close to the DNA of the Yoruba people. So, Igbos and Yoruba, I think Igbo people came from Yoruba, the way. <laughs> the, the, the DNA. There was a DNA that was conducted on Igbos, Benin, and um, Yoruba. So that's where you discover that the DNA of the an average Igbo man is very close to the DNA of the Yoruba person. Mm. I, I hope you are aware of that. In case you are not aware, go and find that. So it's possible that the Igbo people came from Yoruba, or Yoruba came from Igbo. One of the two. But the do people are. We don't have any affiliation done with you. I'm sure when you conduct a DNA test on the Onicha people, it will be far off from your own DNA. You are the people who is dragging all these people. We we don't drag them. That's the difference. You see the difference between you see the difference between the Benins and the Igbos. Let me tell you the difference. The difference is very clear. We are not the one who is dragging all these people. They are the one who is coming out publicly to say that they are ancestrally Benin. We are not dragging. Uh -huh. You are the people. You Igbo people are the one dragging these people. So it is better you go and conduct the DNA test because they are not going to follow you people. If you cannot drag them, they know they are not from you. And that's the point. So you get two mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sorry, the... Oh, okay. Bini invaded the sunland. Oh, okay, we have heard you, we have heard you. Go and sleep now, child. Go and sleep now. What's his name? I do is from Ilife. Uh, no, that's not true. Sandra, Alfred. That's not true, Sandra, Alfred. How can I do it from Ilife? How? Buari conquer. Buari not get their time, Jerry. Ozanisi. Nah, I'm doing fine. Sandra, Alfred, that's not true. I know you've been listening to some of those lies. No, no, no. Anybody should not insult anybody. You know, some sometimes, like I told you. Uh, sometimes it's ignorant. Some people are not really too acquainted with the truth. What I tell people, there are other platforms where they lie. It's also possible I'm also lying. But what, what I'm saying is, when we tackle some questions, you do comparison. Now, the what God gave to us is that we can be able to see, can be able to make comparison about what this one is saying and what the other one is saying. So when you come to my class, I'll be able to tell you the perspective of why a do are not from Ilefe. Now, open your mind to listen attentively. Ask your question so that you can have an open mind. After listening attentively, carry that same open mind to the other class where you've been told that a do people came from Ilefe. With that same open mind, having these two open minds, 
then you will not be able to you're able to scrutinize who is wrong um who is telling the truth that's how it works everywhere all right you have to open your mind to listen to this to this to this narration and listen to this narration all right i have listened to ife narration and i just i, I listened to my narration and i just knew that there's something 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 not correct that is very completely veiled off from logic the ife history Mm, we don't used to anyway uh, what time is it I think we've spent quite a lot of time please ladies and gentlemen I don't uh, um, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Sandra Alfred, I will not be able to, I will not be able to take all your questions or all the questions you're asking for today because uh, maybe we'll take another time or we'll talk about the Benin Ife relationship. We'll keep repeating some of our classes, um, so we'll, we'll keep repeating, we'll keep repeating some of these topics, so that um, try and join us in our next Sunday and so that we can create. Hopefully next one will have open lines. You can call through, ask a question. Don't be insulting. Just ask your question. And um, if you if it's uh, if you if you if you are not insulting, I'll be able to take your question. But if you're very insult if you're insulting, I will not take your question. So, but if you have an open mind, you want to ask questions, and if I'm able to answer, I'll tell you if I'm unable. I'll tell you that I'm going to work on it. So that's how we roll here. Hey, Mike, you don't come, Abby. You don't come. I bet Muna help me beg this mic. Make you leave me, Jerry. This is the way you don't greet me today. <laughs> don't want <sir. laughs> uh, Maybe Muna help me beg Mike. Make you leave me. Or I, don't, I don't tire for the guy. <laughs> I don't have for the guy, Jerry. What question is that? Fame Felis. I didn't get to see. There are a lot. What you don't understand, there are a whole lot of questions popping up, a lot of comments. So I don't get to see them until after the program. So I will not go through all the comments. That's why I will not see a lot of questions. And now I'm like, ah, I was supposed to have answered it all. Ah, that, that would have been very interesting. But most, most times I don't see all the questions. That you're asking because a lot of questions are just popping up. But one of these days, I'll talk about Benin and Orobo. All right, all right. I'm from Benin Okada. So, um, I just like uh, it's okay. I beg, help me, beg, help me beg. Uh, you know, they let me rest money. After you in the evening. Now it doesn't come our show now. Begin to say whether I don't greet her. I don't <laughs> pardon. <laughs> what about my question about the names of Isogman? The names of Isogban. The names of Isogban. Uh previous question. I really don't get it like how many Isogbans have. I really don't know. You know, Esogma is not hereditary, it's rotation and so the present Esogma is um, a Debbie, uh, a Debbie, Chief a Debbie, was the present Esogma. So possibly, I think the Esogma before a Debbie was, um, uh, is the present is a Yamu's father, Pastor Saige is a Yamu. I think it was the... This pastor Saige Zayamu, his father was, I think, I think, I'm not too sure, was either the Esogma before the present Esogma or 
two way song bands ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, we should okay, we should officially because uh, those are those people misbehaving on social media. You know, Igbo people like a those people misbehaving. The, now then they foil them very well so you can misbehave so uh, we should just officially make a, a pronouncement that they are no longer a do people that we don't we don't dash them yes yes fame felix yes i think someone already answered it fame felix if you call it around it's a doodoo -doo our brother in japan answered it i remember uh, yes he is the didn't believe he was. Okay, Samuel White. Uh, my number, my number is zero eight one three six seven two two one six two. Samuel White. I'll repeat zero eight one three six seven two two one six two. That's my number. I think I might be able to it was for administrative purposes it doesn't okay it's for it was for it was the it's not as if uh, the energy of Ura is bigger than the energy of a Woimi or a Uromi and all that it was for administrative purposes I can't really remember that about but Julius E. Raymond, I, I know the story very well. I think I was reading it recently. I can't really remember. Okay, but what happened was that it was for administrative purposes. The Oba was just saying, the Oba at that time was saying that if all the dukes, all the Onojis of Asian land come together, there should be someone that, that should preside over them, that like should be able to coordinate. Not that it's older, it's not actually the the energy of era is bigger than energy of it for for administrative like they are all equal but when they now come together it should be someone who presides over that meeting when they collectively want to preside over a meeting i think it was happened um one of the all by i can't really remember the story but i think i read it recently one of the all by i can't really remember the name of the all but if you give me time i'll be able to get that I would be able to go read that history back to refresh my mind. And Okoje's work, Christopher Okoje, Dr. Christopher Okoje talked about it. It was for administrative purposes. I think they were all arguing. And the only one who tends not to argue was a young Onoji of Irua. So because they didn't come to agreement, the other just stood up and said, since all of you were arguing to become like the Okajis and like, like your leader, uh -huh since you people didn't agree and all that so this the young one should be given is it's now the archives and that that sort of a thing but i i don't like giving history that i'm not too very sure but i know it's like that sha but i have to be very certain so uh if i don't forget I, i'm gonna i'm gonna go get the book i'm gonna read about it and uh if i remember i'll be able to i'll be able to tell you that story of how it came about and it does seem the bliss, it really doesn't work that way. Yeah, uh, there's Obar of Benin and there is chiefs and the John. By hierarchical for administration, for administrative purposes, like in the running of the day to day king uh, matter, uh, uh, matter in the kingdom, Obar of Benin, there, there's nothing like number one, number two. All right, Obar of Benin is on the upper echelon. So when you're not talking about the other echelon, you now say yase, administratively. But when it comes to some matters of traditions, you give it to Olia, both, but administratively, just okay. Let me not confuse you, sin the bliss. Uh -huh. Olia or Zeliloba.
keep telling them fem felis where if they tell you anything that you are not too very certain of always call me in my line whether on facebook call or you have my number you call then i'll be able to put you through and ask you and tell you some certain things that when you tell them they will not be able to answer okay I, don't, I, have, I have repeatedly corrected you people, call to glory. You cannot pronounce anybody Ogyomba. You don't have that right. You don't have that power to call anybody Ogyomba. I've said it. I've said it a thousand times. I don't have that power. You don't have that power. It's only the Obra of Benin to any designated mad piece, anybody he sends that can officially come out and declare anybody Ogyomba. If it's, that is not done, that person is not an Ogyomba. You don't have that power, I don't have that power. So we should stop, we should understand, Ilele Do. If you are an Ovia Do you should know that it is wrong for you to call your fellow Benin an Ogyomba, irrespective of the gravity of the crime. That's because you don't understand what Ogyomba means. An Ogyomba is worse than an outcast. Uh huh. Okay, I think I got that one right. Igodo was the first Ogisho. Abeh, Messi, Ekwase, my sister Lao, help me to beg Mike to leave me alone. At least, even if you don't want to leave me alone, Pama, me give me like two weeks, make I take rest. In the morning, the afternoon, the night. Izodua, 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 Izodua. No, now. The, the only point is I don't answer to you, Chena and John Coco. <laughs> See, your name very funny. I don't answer to you. I only answer to my do people. Definitely not you. All right. So, if my do people request some of these documents, I'll provide it for them. I have a whole lot of them. Mm -hmm. So, Sorry, I, I, I can't take the questions are just too much. And I think something like that. He was standing while the others were seated. And I think something like that. But I'll be able I'll be able to I'll be able to I'll be able to get something as regards that. I've addressed that before. Frost lock Osma of Yahweh. There was a, a class. Go and look for that class uh, of Yahweh. Go and look for that class. When I call, I titled it the Uzama Niyo. Go and look for that class. I had specifically not just only talked about only I talked about every other person. And there was even a, a video I did that um, that was that it's very popular on YouTube and Facebook as well on on the Aegean, the the seven king makers all right i talked about it very well so you'll be able to go and look at that video of via osman of yahweh and be able to know all the duties of olia okay so facebook queries for people you're passing
Okay, uh... Uh, okay, I will just be rounding up now. Oh, you are not aware. What rubbish are you talking Because I hear that that brother lacks sense. That's not how you spell sense. Correct yourself. You that do research every day to teach history, say Igbo. That that's a very wrong English. At least you that no book. Me, I don't know anything, but I can I can't write this rubbish that you call sentence or statement. I'm making a sound to him being that Igbo has link with Yoruba. I just said, I mean, you don't you? Someone talked about DNA. I said the Igbos and the Yorubas have very similar DNA. In case you are not aware, I thought you say you do research. You are not aware that Anambra belongs to. I didn't say Anambra people belong to Benin people. You see, listen very well, young man, and stop making full of full of yourself online. I always said that Onicha people are Benin people. Everybody knows that. Even. Even you in Onugu or Abia, you know that Onicha people are Benin descendant. And they are the heart of Anabrana. Onich, is, is Onicha not even the heart of Igbo land self. And is owned by Benin. So inherently, if Onicha is owned by Benin, and Onicha is the heart of Anabra or Igbo. Okay, now Onicha is owned by, by Benin. Onicha is the heart of Anabra. You understand? So that means Onicha people owns Anabra and Anabra is like the commercial heart of Igbo land. That means Benin people owns Igbo land. You, you get the gist now. <laughs> you can't <do> think. <laughs> I just say you go commit suicide. <laughs> what is the origin of Edo? I've talked about it, but we'll find time again to talk about the origin of Edo. I'll give some people big. <laughs> Uh, uh, I tell you, they, maybe they give the guy money to the attack us online. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, we've been able to. I, th I was thinking I was going to be able to take some of that. <laughs> um, the father of the calendar and who became on the road. So I think I would have been able to take all the topics, but I'm, I'm unable. <laughs> it's fun. It's really very educating to have you guys around today. It's, it's amazing to have you guys around. So I've been able to establish the Asian and the Benin relationship. Uh, no, 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 no. I will not block him. If I wanted to block him, I would have blocked him since. I just like, I like his company. At least it's making here lively. <laughs> so let's leave him. <laughs> and as far, he's not insulting. He's not insulting anybody. He's not, he's not being very invective in his statement. So I would just <laughs> I would just allow him be. But if you start insulting and that's when I block people when they start to insult. Alright, but if you don't insult, let them keep shouting their by Afra or whatever. So I won't I don't I don't block people for having their own opinion. I only block if they start insulting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so um today I hope we've been able to learn that um, the relationship between Asians and Benin, all right, I am begging, I'm begging with the little thing I've been able to talk about, let's, let's have it in our mind, in our heart, that we are ancestrally connected. Asians are Benin. So there is not a mouth, we shouldn't be this is supremacy, this is this. It has to stop. Alright? So it has to stop. Alright? It has to stop. I've told you, keep keep lamenting. Is a Chima is what the Igbo people knew him as. The his original name is Ihimi. That's the name we gave to him in Benin. That was his Benin name. He's a prince. I've told you to go and read Unandi Azikwe's work, Maodesi. 
he called himself a benign man. He didn't call he called himself a benign man. So if you want to go and use your head to hit wall, anybody that is related to his achievement is a proud benign descendant. We have laid down, we have gone past that. If you want to go and use your head to hit wall, go and carry out DNA analysis. That's your headache. We are not the one who is claiming the is the chima. The is the chima are the one who are proud of their benign ancestry. That's different. So we cannot go and be spending money to prove to the is the chima's children that they are benign, knowing fully where the is the chima's children and saying it openly that they are benign descendant. It is you Igbo people that are not saying is the chima are Igbo people that should want to be doing that DNA test. That one not concern us again. So I visited a whole lot of is the chima's clan and now the same story. So I'm, I don't I don't talk by yes. I've toured a lot of these places and I know the story and I know exactly the field. So online make when I the make mat. When I the make mat there, that's what you guys know how to do. But anyway, like I was saying, Asan and Benin must unite, must find a common ground to understand that we are more connected. Uh, uh, now, you know, say me this single now. Uh -huh. Fine, very, very fine. I like fine guests. <laughs> fine guests. I top her after I marry Asan woman, my first wife. I top her with one Igbo girl. I guess emo gets it fine. Emo. Top hand. Um, top hand with make her make one emo get my second wife or my third. This <laughs> <laughs> one emo get it top hand, you know? It will not be a very bad experience. So. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I just look for their trouble. <laughs> anyway, thanks. Uh, thanks a whole lot. Let's let's have it on the back of our mind that uh, we are all Benin people, but as a son, we are related, all right. And um, yes, let me see. Benin are begging, yes, yes, yes. We are go. Oh, do you want me to go on my knees? Yeah, I want to beg my brother, uh, yes. <laughs> Benin will continue to beg a son for friendship, for relationship, for brother. Yes, I'm on my knee. We are, I'm currently on my knees now, begging a son, please let's. Yeah, we could be let's be one, let's be united the way it was in the old. No continue. <laughs> now I will bust your head. Good. I'm on my knees. We are begging. <laughs> I pain out too. I pain out. <laughs> oh no polygamy. No, no, polygamy it's 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 not a sin, it's a is 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 it's our ways of the old. <laughs> you know they my eye. <laughs> you know they my eye. I'm a, I'm a very gentle person. Uh, uh. So that's it. No, 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 love it. So don't play into their game. Oh, if they say that we are begging us and yes, we are begging them. Don't play into their game. They are just trying to use our heads to hit. Well, anyhow you want to put it, greatness, a room on seller or se or amen. Anyhow, everyone is very free to their own opinion. I see Isan as Benin's and I see them as my brothers. But if you don't see Benin's as your brother, that's your own headache. <laughs> I've, I've, I've grown that part of hatred, that part of um, foolishness, I call it. It's not rivalry. It's that part of foolishness. If you choose, I see a son as my brother. If you choose that this Benin's are not your brother, your choice, my brother. So I can't force you. You are an adult like me. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway so i want to thank all of you i want to thank all of you and uh, it's most amazing having to share this very moment with you guys wherever you are um uh, let's keep safe and let's keep pushing this message the message of unity uh, uh let's keep pushing the 
the, 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 the message of unity and to God and ancestors to those who believe in Jesus Christ and those yeah. um, and to uh, Mother Juliet Ahideno, don't put words into my mouth you, you like them you know they put plural or not you like her <laughs> maybe, maybe my babe now they online with you say eh. so now what you gonna do online be digital we can't find find <laughs> I don't put words in my mouth. I'm running up now. <laughs> so I want to thank all of you uh, participating to this program. Uh, you guys are most amazing. And I completely, I completely, um, I completely respect all your opinions. I completely respect you guys following me day in, day out. And at Tango, we've been able to address about one or two, three matters. And some of us will have something to go home with and to be able to tell to be able to tell our children, to be able to tell future generations about some of these things that we've learned. It's all about my program. We educate our minds, we try to exchange ideas, we're trying to look at critical ways for which to unite, for unity, they say, strength. And that's exactly what some of us will keep clamoring. Why some clamor for division? We almost, a larger percentage of us must clamor for unity. Do not think if a Benin ma or a woman does anything to you, do not generalize that if that is what every Benin ma every Benin woman does if an Asian ma or Asian woman does anything to you do not generalize it like one Eromo seller just said it doesn't he's not Benin all right that does not mean that that's what the Asian people have said all right even if it's just 10 percent of the entire Asian people that are saying that one way or the other the ancestral Benin that's a good percentage to start from and it's good enough to to start building on on our connection. We should dwell more on what connects us, what unites us, than what divides us. And that's the message for today, for both my Benin people and my Asian people. So, if I had say words that wasn't really really too okay with some persons, it happens, and uh, I sincerely do apologize for some words I could have used for. Our Ido people who are beneath the center, not Igbo. They like they go use their head, hit, me they go hog transformer, transformer the day. <laughs> me they go use stay hog transformer, like not they always say most of the transformer for Nigeria. But they like they go hog transformer, that are not concerned me. No apologies to all these people. But to my Ido people, a lot of apologies. So thank you all of you and um, I'll see you next week Sunday, this coming Sunday. The time is always 8 p.m. So join me 8 p.m next week Sunday so we can talk about other in very interesting topic I'm going to choose a very interesting topic for next week Sunday so that we all can come and participate all right we all can come participate so thank you all very much and uh, I'll see you next week Sunday how about talk by home <laughs> you do like this you don't do like this so if I'm about all oh, yeah. So, Malani and Hayam Obama, we are just, uh, if you're Obama, hey, we are Obama's children. So, I'm a rabbi. Uh -huh. uh, so, why are we? Thank you very much. I'll, I'll see you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.